Women in ICT, UBC Inspire Uganda, here to celebrate the women out there in ICT. How are they impacting society? How can we address the challenges they have at hand uh, for them to have a conducive environment uh, to make it better for the young children out there uh, since the women uh, spend more time nurturing uh, the girls, nurturing the boys uh, before they get to uh, the communities and before they get to uh, education itself, before they acquire education in classes. I want to look at all that and so much more. And today it's yet another day, another special edition coming your way. And we are live uh, from Broadcast House and Nile Avenue. My name is Sandra Kahunde and this is Women in ICT, a special edition for this particular month as we continue to celebrate uh, the, the women out there. Equal opportunities, that is what we are all looking up to. And uh, for this particular edition, I'm joined yet again with an exciting panel uh, full of women here to share their stories and find ways for them to have a better environment to transact their business or enjoy the tech world. Uh, well, way back you'd say complaints would come through uh, because of the internet connectivity, uh, because of the lack of a proper training, effective training, and lots to do with it. No role models, uh, the bias itself, but how can we stand as a nation uh, to support the women out there? Well, I'll let you uh, get to know my panel and uh, well you can expect quite a lot as far as today is concerned the 21st day uh, the 21st day of march 2023 uh, well to, uh, this morning, I am joined by Rona Katsime at the extreme end. You're most welcome to the program. Uh, Rona is an innovator, a UI, UX designer. She's also a graphics designer. She'll be letting us uh, get to know her more. Good morning. Good morning, Sandra. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Uh, well, next to uh, Rona, I have Fiona Ainem Babazi. Uh, she's a software engineer. Good to have you on the program. How are you doing? I'm doing well, Sandra. Nice to meet you. Pleasure is mine. Uh, well, next to me, I am having uh, Naluswata Sharifa. She is a data analyst and a software developer at Year Engineering Solutions. Uh, good morning to you, Sharifa. Good morning, Sandra, and good morning, viewers. Well, that is my panel, and there's a lot to discuss as far as today is concerned. But however, I'll also be joined on set uh, with another interesting lady. That and much more shortly after these messages. You are with the new Spark 10 series smartphone from Airtel in partnership with Techno. Own the timelines with picture perfect selfies using the 32 megapixel selfie camera, 256 GB storage, G88 gaming processor, and a strong battery to last the whole day. <laughs> Toa Kana. The Spark 10 smartphone comes with free 3 GB from Airtel and 100% bonus on weekly and monthly bundles every month for three months. So you can stay connected to a world of possibilities. Dial star 100 star 5 hash to enjoy free data. The new Spark 10 is available in all selected techno shops countrywide. Airtel, the smartphone network in partnership with Techno. Stop at nothing. It's that time of the year again when Rotary is changing power. In 1905, Paul Harris thought of this very exciting institution called Rotary. Presidents, incoming presidents, does your family know what you do in Rotary? Does the country, Uganda, the district understand what you're doing in the different communities you work in? The Rotary moment is here to showcase what you have done throughout the year. Your projects, your installation, presidents, president elects. Get in touch with the Rotary moment so that we can showcase, show your installation, get to know what you're doing. Your host, Karo Chaze Kakoza, waiting for your call. The Rotary Moments Show, we bring you a Rotary Closer. Real estate experts Viola and Barbara bring you the property hour. What space do I need to be in in order to know more about real estate and construction in Uganda? Well, 
It is right here at the property hour. It is the only space that fills the information gap between the real estate and construction stakeholders and the marketplace. Yes, we are talking about the hottest commodity we have in real estate. Property that brings you income. What do they consider, especially when they are coming up with such property? We tried as much as possible to, to, to make it a green hotel. A recreational area, a tennis court, one of the best pools, infinity pool, if you look at the design. As far as property trends are concerned, the colors. This show is informative, inclusive, and up-to-date. Proudly powered by HK Properties Uganda. Every Saturday from 7.30 to 8 p.m. on UBC TV. It takes courage, passion, practical engagement, career interest, vision, targets who want to create a... Good morning once again. Pleasure to have your company and thank you for choosing the National Broadcaster. Uh, for those of, you, those of you who have just joined us, uh, you're watching a special edition coming your way uh, this lovely Tuesday as we continue to celebrate women in ICT. My name is Sandra. Well, earlier on I did introduce my panel uh, full of women, quite interesting and very exciting. I'm happy to be spending time with with them and of course uh, spending time with you uh, dear viewer and uh, I promise that we're going to be joined by yet another panelist and uh, that is uh, uh, Gudula Naiga she's a managing director and the founder of Guide, Guide Leisure Farm I should be letting us know about her uh, but if you've just joined us Next to me, I'm having Sharifa, uh, Fiona next to Sharifa, and I'm having Rona right there um, in the center. And the extreme end, I'm having uh, Naiga. Uh, thank you for making time. Good morning, Naiga. Good morning. Uh, well, we're here to celebrate women in ICT. Uh, just getting to know what your views or your thoughts are when uh, you get to uh, land on such a statement. Uh, which context do you pick out of it, women in ICT? We start with Rona? Or do you have to go first? Uh, yeah, sure. So women in ICT, really what I think about when I hear that is really women in the digital space. So people who are graphics designers, people who are programmers, ladies who are digital marketeers, or any aspect where there is a digital space is what I would think about when I think about uh, women in ICT. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, there's been a lot, um, but uh, you know, some positions or in some organizations, uh, they tend to put the women like at the back seat, uh, not at the front, like the managerial positions. Yeah. What is your take on that? Unfortunately, I think that uh, our society has put us in a place where women are put in the back, and it's just an unfortunate situation, honestly. But I think that where the world is going now, we are doing better. Women are starting to get into better positions. And as women, we honestly just need to be more aggressive. Put yourself out there. Unfortunately, the world as it is, really, you, if you don't put yourself out there, you're going to stay in the back. So we really just need to continue to put ourselves out there and challenge the men. As much as it might be difficult, I think it's really important to challenge the men. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I get to the extreme end, Naiga. You are a managing director, you are a founder, and I'm sure you've, quite, you've inspired quite so many people out there. I'm just wondering, how do you incorporate uh, ICT into uh, your business? Thank you very much. I'm Professor Goodla, Naiga Basaza, the managing director and founder of Goody Leisure Farm. I'm very happy to be here discussing IC women in ICT. As far as I know, I'm the first doctor of ICT in this country. And I use ICT in all that I do. We run an incubation center. We have youth in 740 parishes, and there is no way we would ever reach them without ICT. So when I think about women and ICT, I know that wherever you are, whether someone has put you behind, ICT will bring you to the forefront as long as you have the content to share 
and you know how to earn from it. I see women taking a center stage regardless of where they are, whether you're in your bedroom or in your kitchen, you can still be the one running that course. You can still be the one selling whatever you are making at home. You can be the one giving others virtual experience because ICT is here to break all barriers that have been put onto women. Well, amazing. <laughs> we shall be getting to know more uh, because, I mean, the young people out there would really want to, uh, to get to understand what can they really do. Is there a space for them? Uh, is there a variety? Uh, like when I get to media, there's so much you can do. Uh, there's so much to venture uh, for you to earn wherever it is. Uh, and it is kind of, um, it's flexible as well. Want to get to know, is this what you're doing kind of flexible as well? Uh, because, I mean, others, uh, you're told to, um, you need to do sciences, you have to be a doctor, uh, yet your passion is somewhere else, and then you end, uh, you end up doing it for the parents, but later on you switch and do what you're comfortable with when it comes to the ICT space. Yeah. What is your take, Fiona? How have you enjoyed the tech world? <laughs> um, very well, happily, working remotely, actually I work remotely at any pace without like these things of like uh, you see doctors going to you have to work when you have gone to the hospital not like us setting up your workstation at home and you work awesomely without any interference so there is a lot of a lot of fields anyone can take maybe you're a designer you can work anywhere you can do your design and show it anywhere because it's blood you're an engineer, you can code and do a website without necessarily moving anywhere to the offices, to the world. And you can work anywhere along the world. Yeah, there's a good space for everyone mm -hmm. to work anywhere as long as you're interested in you and you're passionate, you're passionate about the field you're in. Tell us more about your field. <laughs> software <laughs> engineering. Uh, you know, there's software, there's hardware, loads, telecommunications, <laughs> there's a lot that comes with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. Like, personally, um, I am passionate about mobile and web. Mobile, I can explain it well as something that you can work with on a smartphone or on a desktop, just like that. Then there is um, designers, we have designers, we have engineers who are in telecommunications. We have um, th there's a broad, a broad, a broad, uh, a broad category of. But first of all, you have to find the passion. Let's say you're passionate about education. What is ICT going to help someone who is in education system? You can give them an online e-learning platform. You can help teachers signing in and out, like we don't use papers signing in and out. You can build a system. You're in, av in aviation. What can you do in aviation? You're a farmer. How can ICT help you as a farmer? It doesn't necessarily mean like just being there and you say, oh, ICT is for these people who are intelligent. ICT is for these people who have studied sciences. No. As long as you have the passion, how can I use ICT here and there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Wow. Nice to meet you once again. <laughs> <laughs> Your field is quite so interesting. Uh, Sharifa, just next to me, um, uh, uh, what is your passion? Because there's a lot you're doing, data analyst, software developer, you know. What was your interest way back from school or your passion when it comes to the tech world? Wow, thank you so much, Sandra, for having me at the Women in Tech edition. I'm super excited to share my passion with the rest of the world. So as a child, I grew up in a setup where it was so traditional that you had to be a doctor, an engineer, or a lawyer, like those common um, fields. But growing up, my mom was so passionate about numbers and mathematics, so she was um, approaching the teachers to give me extra numbers to calculate. So I found that passion in numbers. And I saw that in the communities where I grew up from, um, girls had that stereotype of not loving mathematics and not loving science. 
So that passion grew up in me, and in whatever I was doing, I was looking for opportunities to challenge the men out there and be like, I also can, and I love the things that people say that they are hard. So um, when I reached uh, a level, it was interesting to take computer classes. So I took computer and then finally became a computer engineer, <laughs> yeah, which is <laughs> exciting for me. Yeah. So um, I started working in the non-profit non sector, reaching out to marginalized communities. And what I really saw was so demanding. I saw that people didn't have access to the basic science knowledge. People had that fear in them. Many people in villages out there, when they see you creating a technology or trying to figure out how to deal with something, they'd be like, oh, you're spoiling our radio. You're spoiling this thing. <laughs> and that's the way you're supposed to learn. Make some errors and rectify them. Rectify them. But that's how our communities are. Mm. And I really saw the need of empowering such communities. And I've worked with a couple of people. I've, I have worked on teams that were uh, translating human readable textbooks to Braille, whereby we were increasing accessibility to education to visually impaired people, which excited me a lot. I've also worked on uh, extending high quality STEM education to people in marginalized groups, people who are poverty stricken. So uh, currently at EA, I'm a software developer and a data analyst. So that helps me blend in my strong analytical skills to, to analyze how these students who are in those last mile populations who don't have access to internet, to see how they are answering our STEM questions. So our learning model is so unique because we are trying to reach out to those people who don't have internet and the society is against them. As I told you, like you see a person trying to create their technology and the villagers are like, why are you doing that? Mm -hmm. That is not going to take you anywhere, which is quite interesting. You're we need to start with the you're mindset. You're, you're wasting your time. Mm -hmm. That is how they will term it. Mm -hmm. Well, I, allow me to get back to you, Naiga, um, with what you're doing, right where you stay. She's talking about the communities reaching out to those, uh, the visually impaired and um, those who don't have internet access at the moment. How are you impacting society? Thank you very much. Uh, when I was growing up, I worked a lot with my mother, who was a community worker. She spent a lot of time moving around the communities, training them. And I kept thinking, how can I participate in reducing the gap between those who have and those who don't have, especially those who don't have access to knowledge and information? When I decided to pursue my studies, that is what I was looking for. I did a lot of work with e-learning, and I kept thinking, I'm working at university. People have a lot of information. There is a lot of research, but this research never reaches the very person who is supposed to use it to improve, for example, their farming. I decided to run a digital farm where we do intubation, and you can learn from wherever you are. I was targeting Uganda, but interestingly now, I see people from other African countries participating in our learning. We are able to take them through what they are supposed to do in their farming. They are able to access experts from the National Agricultural Research Organization. They are able to ex uh, access expert information. But again, we come together also to market together as a family because ICT is making it possible for us. To me, I think someone who sees their village as their world may not have to bother a lot with ICT because you can walk around your village indeed. But someone who sees the world as their village and they want to give to the world and receive from the world, be rewarded by the world, ICT is the way to go. Today in our network, we have 112,900 youth. At a click, we can all be together in one room and have communication passed on at the same time. I don't know any other way would be able to do that. Wow. <laughs> Great submission. I will run, I'll move to you. Yeah. Um, 
graphics designer, there's a lot you're doing. Um, you love creating yeah. and reaching out to the community and the people themselves. Yeah. Uh, there's a gap that you bridge. Uh, tell us more about you do it and how you impact, impact those people. Right. Uh, I think from earlier on in my life, uh, I've always been a creative. From when I was little, I loved coloring in, in books, all those things. So for people in the creative world, I feel like Sometimes it may be a little uh, difficult to see the impact that you're making. So I, that's why I got into the tech world. Uh, fortunately, when I started out at campus and I got an internship, it was in a, t a tech-related industry. I started out doing animation. And although I loved animation, I realized I was more inclined into uh, digital design and advertising. So I ended up going into advertising and, uh, sorry, graphics design and then eventually moved into UI UX design. So there's a common misconception about uh, the tech world that you have to, to be good at math. You, th this is the only path you have to take. You have to do sciences. And unfortunately, there are people like me out there who are not necessarily good at sciences. But you don't have to necessarily be good at sciences. There are so many opportunities in the tech world where you can uh, be a part of the, the tech space, but not necessarily be good at sciences. So for example, there are, you can be a creative, you can do graphics design. If you're a writer, you can be a tech, a tech writer. You can be a data analyst. There are so many things in the world out there. You just have to look for them. You can be, if you're good with people, you can be a community lead, and that's in the tech world. So there are so many opportunities for you to make an impact on people, even if you're not very good at sciences. So that's where, uh, that's what encouraged me to get into the tech world, to show people that even if you're not necessarily good at math, or you can still make it big, mm -hmm. and. What I do, UI UX design is also something that I do and for this one specifically, you can make such an impact on people because people are always on their phones. So everything that they see, everything that they interact with, you're the one who is designing that. UI UX design is basically me creating something for human beings to interact with technology. And I feel like that's a way that I can impact the society. Yeah. Not like the robots. <laughs> the one would go thinking deep. <laughs> yeah. Is she creating robots? <laughs> like no, that. No, no. Just designs. Uh -huh. Well, Fiona, I move to you once again. Uh, for someone out there wants to be like you. Mm -hmm. They have heard your voice. Uh, the students out there, are they trying to figure it out? Uh, can I really manage? Do I really have to be closer to uh, and make uh, science as my best friend or the maths that you talked about, the numbers to be uh, your best friend? Uh, how did you, what, what would you tell such a person who wants to be like at the end of the day, a student out there still who's still struggling? Move by your passion. We only need passion. It doesn't matter, you're doing sciences, you're doing arts. Like she has said, it doesn't matter if you don't know how to count, or maybe you don't know what is long, when they say low board. Just know, what do I need? What am I going to do there? What exactly do I want? And how will it be beneficial to other people? Because you're not building it for yourself. You're building it for a community. You're building it for other people who even don't know about you. So find a passion. If you find a passion, yeah, I'm interested or I'm passionate about transportation. What is lacking in the transportation sector that you would like to improve? Yes, I'm passionate about agriculture. What is there that ICT can help you to improve? Find passion and you'll be good to go. Okay. Well, Sharifa, I, you, you, you did mention quite a lot um, um, the fact that you reached out to so many people. Uh, you mentioned a few challenges that is to do with uh, uh, the internet connectivity, uh, uh, being st uh, some of the other issues that still affect some of the rural areas out there and the young children that you try to reach out to the visually impaired. What are the key findings, some of the key findings you can cite out that need to be addressed in, in that specific journey that you took uh, with the young children out there in the communities? Thank you so much, Sandra. Uh, what we found out was really amazing. We found out that these people have a great interest in STEM. 
they have a great interest in solving problems in their communities, but they don't have enough knowledge. They don't have enough skills. So uh, what we did was to reach out to them by providing a high quality STEM education through USSD. So uh, we have um, a USSD application that helps these people uh, acquire STEM education. They listen to our lessons via the radio. And then after listening to our lessons, they answer, they answer the, the questions via USSD and then we analyze the data so that's where I play a big part. I analyze the data and then uh, we adjust the program accordingly uh, to, to what the students want. But then what we found out is most of the students when they get pregnant they drop out of school uh, which is quite alarming because if you have a parent who finished primary school without seeing the applicability of science how can they inspire you to take up like to take up that skill in you to be resilient and solve a problem in their community they can't because they didn't get that opportunity so what we do is we identify those out of school people and then we tell them to identify problems that are affecting them on the ground so and they create uh, prototypes or technologies. So an example of the prototypes they created was a solar dryer which they used to dry their agricultural products and it was amazing that such people were there like they encourage other people that or oh, science or oh, thinking and creativity is the way to go which is something that we are looking for. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah. Uh, well, some of the other complaints that go through, uh, apart from the internet connectivity, the lack of effective training, uh, the bias itself, uh, there's a lot that comes through. Others would say, uh, we never had the role models, you know, with the setup that we've been having traditionally uh, to get into uh, the tech world and how we have advanced through as Uganda itself. Um, role models, I don't want us to go far, I'd look out. I would look up to Naiga. Uh, she's a professor. I imagine your journey has not been easy. Uh, let us get to know some of your achievements through the years. It uh, could be an inspiration for someone out there who is watching. Thank you very much for putting a spotlight on me. Some of the achievements that I am very proud of in regard to this topic, having taken a bold step in the year 2001 to actually engage in ICT, it was difficult to get a supervisor in Uganda. I was supervised by someone from the University of Ghent, and I was able to understand the value ICT would bring in bridging the gap, especially between the poor and the rich in access to education. The other achievement that was very significant in my life is during my, my postdoc, I was able to write two books. And one of the books is making it easy for anyone to use ICT and because of ICT my book is earning even when I'm sleeping <laughs> amazing <laughs> yeah my book is selling out there I don't have to move up and down with the book it's online and people are buying and money is coming to my pocket that's a big achievement the third being able to put up this network of young people that are yearning for knowledge but also building the ecosystem mapping to support these young people. Today, my youth are able to bank online, regardless of where they are. I have youth in 27 districts. I have youth in Moroto. I have youth in Chisoro. But they all connect as one, regardless of where they are located. And this is possible because of ICT. But the exciting one among the youth that I'm working with is for the youth to begin to earn from the knowledge economy. Many times we are encouraging people have a product, have a service, you are selling, but our youth are earning from the knowledge economy. How? The information they get from us, what they learn, they go ahead and use it to train other people and they are rewarded for that training. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I know there's really a lot in the bucket uh, that you've left out, uh, maybe because of time or something, but I'm sure at least um, even the fellow ladies right here have been inspired with Niagara's story. <laughs>
Well, what, we want to have a better environment, a conducive one, so that we can lift up the other sisters, uh, so that the young people there can get to know uh, they can enroll and have this at campus, at university, that there's an opportunity for them uh, to get those jobs coming through uh, because they will be like, uh, is, that, is that sellable? Will I be able uh, to get into the job market? They have such questions. Um, I'll get to Rona. Yeah. And I'm sure most of you will have to <laughs> you know, add a voice to it. What can be done for you people to have a better and conducive environment? I think that uh, it's really important for us as women to share our stories because there are so many girls out there who don't know that these things can be done by women. So if I see Rona on TV telling her story about how she's a graphics designer, how she's a UX designer, it can be inspiring to someone. So I think that it's really, really important for us to tell our stories and be a part of communities where we can share this information with people. Um, uh, WAPI, the company that I work for, is a digital talent marketplace. And what we do is we bridge the gap between people who have taken creative digital skills to employers. And we have a community of people w and they just interact with each other. And such communities, it's really important to be a part of them because then you have access to this information. And if you don't have this information, then how are you going to get into that tech space? The most important thing about being in the tech space, I believe, is to network. If you don't, if you're not a part of these networks, then you're not go you're going to miss out on a lot of information. And, uh, but this information is out there freely. You can find all kinds of information about the tech, the tech space out there. You just have to be very proactive about it. But I think, yes, the most important thing is just for us, the women, to share our stories. And I really commend UBC for giving us a platform where we can share our stories. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. That, is, that sounds so <laughs> lovely. <laughs> Fiona, what has to be done for you to enjoy or be able to lift up another sister or for you to have a better working environment, to speaking be proud of up. Uganda? Yeah, 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 speaking up. Speaking up and asking for help at times, it's not disability. No one will underlook you for asking for help. Let's say you're a leader of a team and maybe, you know, uh, like girls, when you're on a team of like five men and you're a girl, there's the way they look up to you. And if you're not that strong, <laughs> you might fear, oh, they have hit me with this bag, or oh, they, they are under me, like that, like that. Mm -hmm. They are taking you that and that. But as long as you speak up, always ask for help. Join women. We have women groups around Kampara. We have Fundi girls. We have women tech makers. Get a group. Be part of them. Share ideas with them. Then you can find a, fa a, a mentor. Have a mentor who can guide you. It's not always you're always alone. There's always someone there ready to help you. Yep. Someone out there will understand your yeah. language. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sharifa, what needs to be done for you to be able to reach out to the rural communities and the children that you're inspiring, for someone to be like you, a data analyst? Yeah, thank you so much, Sandra. So I, I really feel what needs to be done is, uh, first of all, um, I'm going to segment them into two parts. What's need, what needs to be done on our end as women? We need to be more resilient. We need to know that um, everything needs some extra effort and you need to ensure that when you fail, please try again. Don't think that uh, the ICT field is something that you're just going to try out once and when it fails you just give up. You have to be resilient, you have to keep asking good questions and then you have to be confident. You have to be confident. Confidence is a garment that will help you fill up those spaces where people think you don't belong. Yeah. And on the end of the government, I would like to thank it, to thank the government of Uganda for increasing access to education, but we still need more effort. We still need uh, to reach out to those um, rural, rural areas, and we need more government support on that. And for the telcos, we need more support to subsidize on the internet and on the USSD cost, because it's a means we are using to reach out to those people. And we need more spaces at the Ministry of ICT. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I, I, I salute you, um, 
Naiga, the professor that we have on the panel. Uh, you being an author and uh, reaching out to so many people out there, even when you're not there physically. Um, I believe there's really a lot that you can do. Are there still more that you can use to, uh, to, you know, to shed light or to ho hold someone's hand out there? What needs to be done for you to go miles and go beyond? Because I'm sure you still want to reach out to so many out there uh, with the zeal that you, you carry with you. To supplement what my colleagues have just said, I see the importance of enabling the women to seize the opportunities at hand. Today we have women who are excited in the digital world, but we have those who don't even have an idea that it exists. They don't even know what they are missing. I think what we need to do is to bring all those people up front. One of the things that we have done, we did what we call a digital fireplace on 8th of March where we expose the number of women to different ways in which you can participate in the digital world. And to my surprise, a number of women had no idea what tools are out there that they can use to enhance even their own businesses, their own brands. So I feel that there is still lack of awareness of what is there that I can use to enjoy being in the digital world. So that is uh, an obligation for all of us us who have an idea of what is there, let us pass it on to those who do not have. How can we do that? This is going to be through us having a deliberate effort for content development. What is that message you send on your WhatsApp group? Are we forwarding other people's messages or we are forwarding our own messages? If you are doing graphics, can you support someone to do graphics just using their phone? probably using a software like Canva. I think we are going to have to be deliberate teachers to pull people to become part of the content development economy. Mm -hmm. Wow, that, <laughs> I'm sure that, that has really sunk <laughs> so well. <laughs> Good for digestion, love to add a voice to it. Yes, uh, just to expand a bit on what you said. Uh, I think that yes, we can try as much as we can to be teachers to other ladies, but it also takes a person who is willing to learn. Mm. We may need to get out of this, uh, I, I, should I call it self-pity? <laughs> <laughs> they they, they don't want to learn, they, do, they don't want to put themselves out there. You have to actually actively want to learn these things. And in the digital space, if you it's constantly changing, so you're constantly learning. Mm -hmm. If you're not willing to learn, if you're not willing to put in the work, it's not going to work. So you have to actively, actively be chasing so that you can learn. Yeah. As much as us as women would try and help you and push you, if you're not willing to put in the work, it's, it's really not going to work. Mm -hmm. yeah. Feeling sorry for yourself, mm -hmm. like it would be too much. How can I deal with all that? We really that? need to you get know? out of <laughs> that. Feeling sorry for we yourself. We need to get out of that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, uh, people tend to do certain courses and they're like, uh, in case I fail to be employed somewhere out there and I get my capital, I'll be able to start up something. What happens in the ICT world? Imagine you've just gotten out of university. Or imagine you have some money on you, uh, some investment we want to throw up, you know. What happens in the tech world? How can someone start up? Hmm. Uh, I'll speak on. <laughs> I'll, speak on the the side of, <laughs> I'll speak on the side of, let's say, uh, designers. I, I, I would think, if you start, if you are right out of campus, I think the best way to go at it is to uh, learn a skill first. So, if you're going to invest, invest in yourself, because unfortunately for us, the universities here aren't very. Uh, the, you can't learn, uh, let's say, graphics design. Okay, I, I did uh, industrial art. But you will have to go an extra step to learn the, the software, to learn how to use it. So I think the best thing would be to invest in yourself and learn a skill and hone in on that skill and be the best at it that you can. And then that's how you will build something. So if you have, let's say, uh, a, something that you want to build, if you have a skill already, then after you've gotten that skill and you, you know that you're good at it, or even if you're not perfectly good at it, then you can begin to build something, create, gather people around you, make a team of people that you know that will 
will push this thing with you and then uh, maybe you can build something. But I think the most important thing in the digital space is first to build a skill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. Someone would love to add a voice to it. Yeah. Imagine, uh, okay, the PDM is going through and people are excited getting that money, getting a hold of I that money. I think the second element in this regard would be to identify challenges that people have. Every time you are solving someone's problem, you have a business. I'm going to talk about farming. When you look at a farmer, what are the challenges that they have? I have seen some of the entrepreneurs that come to us in tech. They're saying, we can help you do your record keeping. We can help you understand your business at a click. You are solving my problem. I may be doing this repeatedly and I get tired, but now when you come and offer me this solution, I say, wow, I'm willing to pay for it. So as young people after school, look out for people's problems and start addressing the problems, you'll be rewarded for that. During COVID-19, people were not able to move from home. So we said we were a farm and we were able to prepare. We are into white meat as well, chicken, fish, rabbit, and pork. And we said people cannot go to their favorite pork joint, but we can bring them. <laughs> can you imagine We that? can <laughs> take the pork joint to their homes. Wow, and you really want so to So we sold, started making fryers here and there, <laughs> just sending on WhatsApp. We ended up having a database of about 1,000 340 clients Amazing. that we supply ready to eat. Then there are those who wanted ready to cook, there are those who wanted marinated. <laughs> so we, st we went online, it, without, was it wasn't our intention, <laughs> but we were solving someone's problem. And then the in the end we created an opportunity for ourselves. What did it do? It took us away from the supermarket. We were supplying supermarkets and then you delay to get your money and you're <laughs> waiting. But this is a customer who sends money before they get <laughs> their product. Mm -hmm. And you are able to get feedback there and then. The customer is able to say, but your chicken now looks different. Your pork has a lot of fat. You are getting <laughs> feedback from the buyer. Immediately. Because in the supermarket, it's difficult for someone to call you mm -hmm. and give you that feedback. So look out for problems and see how ICT can address these problems. I don't want to be in the jam. Solve it with your ICT solution. Mm, that's the way to go. Day by day, living ICT everyday life. Mm. Wow. Because uh, I mean, uh, like I was explaining at the, uh, the big, uh, just a few minutes ago, our PDM, people excited to get that money, you know, trying to invest in small scale businesses. Imagine there was an opportunity from the Ministry of ICT uh, looking out for women mm -hmm. and they wanted to invest and you had something for Grab. What would you do, Sharifa? Uh, thank you so much, Sandra. So uh, what I would do is I would look for, I, I would look, I would use my, uh, my skills to identify a problem and then I use, a pre I solve it in a creative way, in a way that is going to be unique. So um, I'll also use collect some data like uh, so that I make data-driven decisions and not just make decisions out of the blue and then they invest money in you and then um, it doesn't work as you expect. So if the Ministry of ICT would invest in our product, the year Air Science Learning Model, which is used to reach out to so many people, I think it would be so great for us to invest, to subsidize for us on USSD costs and other uh, telecom costs because we majorly use uh, USSD to reach out to our students. Mm -hmm. yeah. And at the end of the day, it wouldn't be like these other ones giving excuses. Mm -hmm. oh, we, thought mm -hmm. we, 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 did, we thought Mosaic gave us the money. <laughs> <laughs> they no. have nothing to return. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Uh, well, if you were given that token of appreciation of maybe to invest, what would you do, uh, you as software engineer, Fiona? Yeah, I would go and first find out a challenge someone is facing, not only here around Kampala, but do research. Because you're going to build a solution. Let's say for me, I'm passionate about transportation. So I will go outside, outside the city, 
many people, how are they go going to get a good transportation service to the city? How are they going to move from here to there? What can they use? She has talked about uh, USSD. Can someone die use a, a certain code and they can access, maybe it is connected with the with a driver somewhere. Can they dial it and someone knows, oh, press option one if you need a pickup, press option two if he has arrived and you accept. There are so many things. We have mobile applications. Can someone order somewhere they are going to go? And they go flexibly at any time they need, not necessarily going and standing on the road, waiting for someone to pick you up. Someone wants to travel from maybe up country to the city. Which easiest mean can they use? Can they use a smartphone? They go on, a, on an app and they just go there and order. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, having a great time here <laughs> uh, with my panelists. Uh, time is against us. We have a few minutes left, but it's good to know that we're still having your company. Uh, well, uh, before we let you go, uh, enjoy your Tuesday. Um, something that you'd love the view out there to, to remember you for. Naiga, like on such and such a day, I tuned into UBC and I was really inspired. There was this lady, she really spoke to my heart. What are some of those words you'd love to share? Thank you for giving me that opportunity. To the people out there, everybody has a woman in their life. It be your mother, your daughter, your sister, your friend. We have an obligation to see that these women participate in the development of this country. Some of the limitations they have are not their own. And ICT is here to break into those barriers to deny women the platform. My request is support the women to raise their awareness, to increase their ability to navigate in the digital world. When we look at the physical land, women own less than 10 percent of the titled land in this country but we can own over 90 percent of the digital plots out there support the women to enjoy participating in the digital world and in the digital way and be able to keep their money safely a number of times we have kept our money under the pillow we have had challenges but now we can have digital currency Thank you. <laughs> Spoke about keeping the money. <laughs> it's crazy, it's funny, but uh, some people still do it. Uh, a week ago, I had a lady in the neighborhood complain, you know. <laughs> <laughs> she was going to shift, and when she tried to check around, you know, move her things and pack them up, she realized her money was not under the mattress. <laughs> mm. It was had an incident, but that's what happened to her. Mm. Uh, well, Rona. A uh, word of encouragement or advice, not only to a woman, but someone who is watching you, and they'll be like, ah, yes, that's what <laughs> Rona said. Uh, yeah, uh, to all the women or the girls out there, I think, uh, figure out what you are passionate about and chase that. It's really just as simple as that. Figure out what you're passionate about and chase it and be the absolute best that you can at it. And if you're the best at what you do, you'll be able to make money and you're able to sustain yourself i believe that it's very important for women to be able to sustain themselves you don't need to depend on anyone just chase your dreams and put in the work be as aggressive as you can it's a tough world out here so be as aggressive as you can develop thick skin because the digital space is also not as easy as <laughs> as we <laughs> might think it is it's really not easy you have to be a hard worker and you have to produce work so chase your dreams but be aggressive and be a hard worker yeah there are no shortcuts no shortcuts if it's time for you to get and pull those cables there you have no to shortcuts. you will pull them <laughs> <laughs> yeah fiona we're moving up to you as i know uh, someone out there is watching and wants to get to hear something from you you're strong you're brave it's not easy build it today is the day you have to do it don't wait for tomorrow just do it yeah. Whichever assignment on table at the moment, don't yeah. be like, I'll do it the next day. Tomorrow is not promised, just do it today. Mm -hmm. yeah.
Oh, Sharifa, we can't wait <laughs> to hear what you have for us, for someone out there to pocket as they enjoy, as they enjoy Tuesday. Yeah, so thank you so much, Sandra. Um, I would really love each and everyone to implement the, the engineering step design process in their mind. Like, don't fear failure. Everything that is good has been iterated over and over again so that it becomes a very good product. So what you need to put in your mind is you have to be resilient. When you try out something and it doesn't work, don't give up. Stay faithful and come and try again. Yes. Wow. Great words of encouragement to the person who has been watching us for this particular edition. It's always a pleasure to spend time with you. I had a great time, I should say. And uh, appreciation goes to the, my panelists. Uh, thank you for making time. At uh, the extreme end right there, I uh, had uh, Gudula Naiga, Managing Director and the Founder of Guide Leisure Farm. Thank you. Wish you all the best at the farm. Great Thank initiative you. that you have right there. Thank and uh, please go right ahead and inspire so many. I'm sure uh, you've touched a life today. And uh, next to her is um, Rona Katsime. She's an innovator, a graphics designer, UI, a UX designer. Great words from you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for me, your Sandra. time. It was a uh, Fiona, you've been an inspiration too. Fiona in Mbabazi, software engineer. I've uh, inspired so many from Kanungu. <laughs> and you've Thank done quite you. a lot. Oh, how do you know that? <laughs> <laughs> Please go ahead and lift up a sister. Thank you for your time. Yeah, sure. Thank you. I know so what much. happens when they, they look at the lady like, oh, she's short and she's small. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Thanks yeah, for yeah. all the effort. And uh, next to me, I had uh, Sharifa Naluswat, a data analyst and a software developer at Year Engineering Solutions. A great work reaching out to the young people out there to be just like you. Amazing. It's <laughs> not like the so way it used to be like, ah, you walk up to an office and you find a lady like her, where do I start? She's just mm -hmm. going to look at me from head to toe. <laughs> well, all that is in the past. Yeah. Well, Thank for the person so out there who is watching, as you enjoy today, please remember to live a purpose-driven life. As the lady said, you need to put your best foot forward. I'm happy I'm going to enjoy Wednesday. Looking forward uh, to having more of your company. That is tomorrow. That is what is going to linger in my mind. I can't wait to see them tomorrow for yet another special edition. My name is Sandra Kahunde. Uh, thank you for watching UBC, the national broadcaster, as we inspire you. Have a blessed day and salute to my ladies. <laughs> thank you.